John 117 and Mickey's misguided relationship has been dropped, as has Cortina's assumption as Master Chief at the conclusion of the first season. David Weiner, a new showrunner, has taken over, and Pablo Schreiber, the man in the helmet, has made no secret of the fact that this new season is a huge improvement over the previous one. Sanctuary, the first episode of Halo Season 2, comes with a lot on the line. Halo's first season was somewhat contentious, especially by the time of the last episode. The history of Master Chief, the Covenant, the Spartans, and Halo was left in a somewhat disorganized state. The second season still needs to clear things out. The first scene of Halo Season 2 bridges the gap between the season's beginning and the cliffhanger of Season 1. Pablo Schreiber's character, Master Chief John 117, is seen on an operating table, hardly surviving the injuries he sustained in the Battle of Ra's Khatska. In order to help Master Chief prevail during the fight's climax, Cortina assumed control of his body. However, the fight now left open the possibility that Cortana was still in charge afterwards. In the first scene of Season 2, the medical team tending to Chief says that they have to cut off his link to Cortana in order to save his life. A close-up of Master Chief's face with a tear streaming from his eye demonstrates that, despite being immobile throughout the procedure, he was nonetheless deeply hurt by losing his eye friend. The final destiny of Cortana is never revealed. After six months, we reunite with Silver Team, the Master Chief Kai, Banak, and Riz on Sanctuary. They are assigned to support a UNSC civilian evacuation effort which is generating tension between the locals and the military. Before the evacuation occurs, they are also searching for Bravo Team, the missing USC squad. We find out that the four Spartans have all removed their emotional suppressor pellets, which has changed the way they perceive the world. After a local shamanic figure known as the Mother challenges them, the chief intervenes to defuse the situation. When Kynovus's sparks in the planet's surrounding fog, the chief hastily leaves to attempt to get in touch with Bravo team before it's too late. He locates a couple of the unit's members, but they are quickly eliminated one by one. The chief and Corporal Perez are the only ones who survive. The chief repels them successfully. With their energy swords poised, many Covenant troops emerge from the mist and then abruptly stand down. Along with Perez, the chief flees after thinking he saw Makey in the mist. He returns in time to witness the evacuation while traveling the mother, who stays on the planet with her followers while the Covenant starts to blast it, blow it with powerful plasma weapons, making it uninhabitable, sends Master Chief a foreboding warning to find his faith. Captain Jacob Kai's briefs Silver Team back on Reach, stating that the UNSC has now lost two worlds and anticipates losing another shortly. James Ackerson, Dr. Halsey's replacement, interrupts the meeting as Master Chief is about to inform Keys about the clandestine Covenant mission. Vanak believes that Silver Team should be let off the leash and dispatched on actual combat operations, but he dismisses Vanak's argument and sticks to his own that he wants the Spartans to be the best they can be. Ackerson exits the conference after telling the Silver Team they need to get cleared by the medical staff. Next, we go to the rubble, where a pirate auction for indentured workers is being held by ex-Spartan Soren. When a young man named Felix claims to know where Dr. Halsey is, Soren becomes interested. He publicly rejects the youngster but Lara, his wife, believes he won't pass up the chance to find Halsey. After meeting with Ackerson, Master Chief finds that John 117 has a little more respect for his new boss after learning about his military background. He suggests that the Covenant's assault on Sanctuary's communications relay may have been a practice run in order to get ready for a more significant goal, but he is unsure of what that may be. Ackerson reframes the conversation to focus on Master Chief stating that he merely cannot accept that John could have survived the circumstances he detailed on Sanctuary. Ackerson begins to doubt the chief's fitness for duty, wondering if the chief is experiencing any negative effects from his connection to Cortina. John disputes Ackerson's claims that the chief is in no way unsuited for battle. Master Chief later finds out that Ackerson sent Cobalt Team to accompany a tech squad on what they believe to be a nothing mission to fix a communications relay somewhere else. Master Chief cautions them not to undervalue this mission and tries to convince Ackerson to alert them to the Covenant threat. But Ackerson once more rejects his theory in the absence of proof. Now back aboard the rubble, Soren is getting ready to follow Felix's lead as to where Halsey might be. He tells Kessler, his son, that he's too old to believe in monsters in the universe, but Kessler is worried about them. Then he tells Felix that if his lead turns out to be false, he'll be left out in the galaxy. The chief walks on reach at street level while remaining anonymous. 
He encounters Margaret Parangoski, a former admiral in an elevator. She advises him not to put his trust in Ackerson and to continue obtaining information about the Covenant's activities and reporting it to her. In addition, she gives him a button to press so she can locate him. After that, he goes to a bar where he converses with an AI that has been altered to resemble Kortna. He thinks back on the Battle of Sanctuary, when he is now certain that he heard Mickey remark, you should have stayed with me before the Covenant fled, but his conversation with the fictitious friend doesn't seem to be very fruitful. Soren and his crew, meanwhile, take off to locate the ship that Halsey was purportedly transported aboard in a cryo tube. Together with Felix, he climbs into the crashed car and they start investigating it. Upon arriving at the container that Halsey was purportedly imprisoned in, Soren observes his group taking off. Then, more gunmen show up out of the shadows, and it becomes clear that Felix's lead was a lie. He replaces the Spartan deserter under custody as Felix's troops advance. When Soren's group returns to the rubble at the end of the episode, Kessler notices that his father is not among them and runs to find Quan, who talks to him about the nature of monsters. In another scene, a massive fleet of the Covenant emerges from the mist. In the first scene of Halo Season 2, a brunette and Dr. Halsey have an odd interaction in which the girls informs Halsey what she sees in her visions. The kid also tells Halsey about an odd man who leaves gifts for her. But before Halsey can question her further, the girl passes out from a nosebleed. Once we return to Earth, we find out that the Silver Team has been placed on the bench indefinitely. John asks Kai if she believes he is deranged or has a mental illness. Furthermore, John admits that he saw Makey at Sanctuary. Kai is taken aback by this, since it was she who shot Makey at the conclusion of Season 1. John finds out that Ackerson has placed the Cobalt team on alert until they have accurate information regarding the Covenant danger, even though John begs them not to. John replies by asking Ackerson about the Cobalt team and whether or not they are still alive, but he again brushes all of John's questions and concerns off. John is also informed by Ackerson that the Marines he had saved from Sanctuary don't remember anything that transpired there. In the course of the episode, we also see a quick sight of Kwana as she battles to repel her assailants, who have located her beacon and intend to sell her for credits. Since Soren was apprehended, this has been occurring every day. Luckily, Kwanha kills both of her attackers with the use of the tactics her father taught her. Thankfully, she has also gained some friends, most notably Soren Sum Kessler. Additionally, we discover that Soren's staff has been lying to their faces while saying they're making every effort to locate Soren. This is untrue because it was they who purposefully left him on the damaged ship. Not only is Kwanha struggling, but Riz is also in a lot of pain as a result of the fight that concluded the first season. Riz finds it difficult to concentrate on her training and herself. Riz doesn't disclose it to anyone, though, since she thinks it will make her appear weak and untrustworthy. In order to show everyone that Covenant is getting ready for something significant, Master Chief chooses to ignore Ackerson and sets out to find Cobalt on his own. Master Chief, however, pushes Riz over the line, saying that they cannot remain inactive when Covenant is getting ready to strike. Kite is worried about this, but she still thinks John will be able to get back up on his feet. Kai tells Ackerson he just needs time to move on from the past. John, on the other hand, goes to Talia's residence, the survivor of the Marine, and questions her about why she lied in her report about not remembering what happened. John finds it impossible to say no when Talia's mother invites him to stay for dinner, because she thinks they are dating. When they are by themselves, Talia says that she saw Covenant at Sanctuary as they were climbing the hill to fix the relays. She blames herself for being the only survivor, so she decides to lie. As the episode goes on, we find out that Hasley has been repeatedly put through the same situation by Ackerson. The man the girl has been describing is Ackerson as well. Additionally, it is revealed that Ackerson, who took over Cortana, has been holding Halo Keystone, the relic that the Spartans discovered on Madrigal. Additionally, Cortana reports a 97 probability of anything occurring, but she doesn't explain what these figures imply. John ultimately makes the decision to defy every directive Ackerson has given him as the episode draws to a close. He discovers that the Cobalt crew has never left Reach by using the UNSC computers. John eventually deduces what Covenant was up to. Actually, before glassing the planet, Covenant is interfering with relays. Reach is next, if not prevented, like they had done with Sanctuary. John is correct. The following scene shows Makey, who didn't die in Season 1, and Covenant soldiers breaking into the USC base, murdering Marines, and obtaining a second Halo Keystone. 
Hilo's second episode maintains the same level of action and tension as the first. At last, the Covenant's intentions become more apparent. They sneak into Reach, assault the Marines that are stationed there, take the Keystone, and it appears like they are preparing to glass the area like they did Sanctuary. But first, why did they come to Sanctuary? They might have been looking for something, perhaps a different Keystone or an old relic, that might have helped them win the conflict.